Most of the world has been in quarantine for almost a month now, and we have seen the devastation that COVID-19 has brought, particularly in countries that have been hit the hardest. But in this war against the virus, there are multiple front lines where battles are being fought. But the battlefield that we almost never see is the one that is being fought out at sea. As the days and weeks in quarantine and lockdown have passed by, we have seen and admired our frontliners. You know, our medical professionals, our security, law enforcement, and military. Even the people who sell us food in the groceries, and also the delivery guys, who tirelessly report for duty and continue to do what sometimes seem to be a thankless job risking their own health and even their own lives in the process, in a concerted effort to flatten the curve. But as most people are probably unaware, there's another group of frontliners out in the oceans, aboard ships. They are the seafarers, and they are fighting a different battle against COVID-19, and that is the battle to sustain the world's economy. The international shipping industry is responsible for the carriage of around 90% of world trade. In essence, it is the lifeblood of the global economy, because without it, the bulk transport of raw materials such as grains and coal or oil, and also the import and export of affordable food and manufactured goods which we use in our daily lives, would simply be impossible. There are over 50,000 merchant ships in the international trade alone, manned by over a million seafarers of different nationalities. For those of you who have been in my channel for a while now and have seen my previous videos, you are more or less already aware of how difficult and dangerous a life at sea is under normal circumstances. With COVID-19, the difficulty and the danger just increased exponentially. The cruise industry was probably the first to be hit, primarily because it carries thousands of people, crew and passengers, on board. A friend of mine who worked on one of the ships that carried infected people told me that they strictly enforced quarantine on board by isolating the passengers in their cabins. Food was delivered via room service, but he mentioned that the passengers were required to write down their orders on a piece of paper and just leave it outside their doors. These pieces of paper were treated as biohazard materials, so the service crew would then proceed to photocopying them and then dispose those papers immediately. The photocopies were the ones sent to the galley. So you can see they have imposed certain barriers in order to avoid close contact in an otherwise confined space such as a ship. But thankfully, their methods proved effective and the passengers and crew were eventually allowed to disembark. And upon arriving in their home country, they were sent to a quarantine facility for 14 days before being allowed to go back to their own homes. Now, we all know that China is a major destination for cargo ships as a big percentage of the world's goods passes through there. Okay, we are here in Dalian Port, China. What I'm showing you now are uh, terminal workers wearing masks and full body protection against possible possibility of contacting the coronavirus. Incidentally, China also provides relatively affordable services to ships, like dry docking and shipbuilding. So it's kind of unavoidable for most ships in the international trade to go there. And since dry docking there involves the ship's crew working side by side with the Chinese dock workers while in the middle of the pandemic, there is a very big risk of exposure. 
Working in dangerous situations are actually nothing new to seafarers. They face workplace hazards, rough sea, fire, and they're very much adept at using personal protective equipment. And creating barriers in order to combat the hazards, that's practically the job order every day. But even though certain precautions and preventive measures are being carried out, the risk will always be there. Knowing this and still being in the middle of it all, with an invisible hazard that is fatal to humans, has a high infection rate and no known cure, it takes a heavy toll on one's mindset. I feel a bit frightened since the US government recently reported that there are more than 30,000 Americans who have been infected with the virus across all 50 states. We have discussed the contingency plan, we have discussed uh, the precautions among the officers and the crew, um, taking the risk and the possibility that men are exposed. You might be asking, if the situation is very difficult for them, then why don't they just go home? Good question. Well, under normal circumstances, extension of contracts is actually a common thing in the seafaring industry mainly because of schedule conflicts and waiting for the ship to call on a convenient port. In any case, it is a normal thing for seafarers to get delayed in being sent home. Now, because of the COVID situation, a lot of countries have locked down and are not allowing seafarers to disembark from their ports. That means no shore leave and no crew changes. Sir, anong sentimento mo? Ikaw pa uwi ka na, di ba? Tapos na-cancel? Masasabi ko lang po, mag-ingat po tayong lahat. Ako ay mag-itiis dahil sa hindi tayo makauwi dahil sa corona. A lot of seafarers who are on board right now are already on extended contracts because they're not being allowed to go home. Some of them have have been on board for more than 10 months, maybe even more. Current regulations actually prohibit contracts exceeding 12 months, but most companies have self-imposed policies that limit contracts to a maximum of nine months because studies have shown that productivity and safety consciousness drops significantly during extended shipboard contracts. But in the present situation, the companies actually can't do anything if the country their ships are going to doesn't allow crew change. Now, a lot of us who are presently land-based have been in quarantine for a few weeks now. Just staying at home, watching Netflix or YouTube, or just being extra active in social media. But you could see that a lot of people are already complaining about being bored out their wits because they ran out of TV shows to watch or maybe because they just miss going out with their friends, whatever. For seafarers, that's just how normal life is at sea and they do that for months. They continue to do their hard and dangerous work every day away from their families because to them, there's no such thing as work from home. For those who are on board ships that have internet facilities, well, they are a bit luckier, I suppose. But as I have mentioned in the previous video, a great majority of ships still don't have internet equipment on board. They only get internet SIM cards when their ships reach port, but now because of quarantine, they won't even be able to access the internet Maybe for how many months? It will depend on how the situation goes, so who knows? So imagine that, being isolated, away from your family, and no internet access for months in the middle of this worldwide crisis. It's a good thing though that groups like the International Christian Maritime Association are aware of the extraordinary situations that seafarers face and have made a lot of effort to continuously support seafarers as much as they could. Hello everyone, my name is Jason Zaidema. I work as General Secretary of the International Christian Maritime Association. 
At this time, it's quite difficult for our Siemens clubs to continue to do our regular work. Well, we want to encourage you to continue to reach out to us. Uh, though we can't go on board, we'd like to still be able to offer you some things. Perhaps we can come to the gangway, deliver SIM cards or uh, some other products that you might wish to have from a local store. Perhaps you'd like to talk to someone. All of these things are very possible, and we want to encourage you to do all those things as much as it's possible. May God bless you, be with you. Please stay healthy and safe. Despite the fear and paranoia which tends to build up after weeks in quarantine and lockdown, we should note that there hasn't been any major riots or looting that has occurred. In fact, in the Philippines alone, the crime rate has dropped 55%. The reason behind this is because the supply chain for food and basic commodities have been mostly kept intact. Groceries and markets still have products to sell and people still have access to them. Riots and looting and a lot of other crimes will only happen if there is no food left in the stores. And seafarers play a very big role in this because they keep the supplies flowing. They carry on with their duties despite the lack of support and sometimes utter disregard by some ship owners and even governments. And what do I mean by lack of support? There have been reports about ships not being supplied with PPE and still allegedly pressured by ship owners to carry out cargo operations in ports. Honestly, it's like sending soldiers to war without giving them weapons, even just to defend themselves. That, that just doesn't make any sense. And there are some ports that allegedly do not implement the use of proper PPE for their workers and still expect the ship's crew to work alongside with them. In this port, they were not implementing any safety precautions unlike what we had in our first port. But the ship's still following the standard safety precautions like wearing mask, washing your hands all the time, and avoid close contact with the shore personnel. That's like intentionally wanting the disease to spread. Now, on the issue of governments, a lot of them have prohibited crew change in their ports which is why a lot of seafarers have been forced to extend their contracts indefinitely. Although they're still on board their ships, they're practically stranded at sea. Please bear in mind that those seafarers transported goods to or from your country, which was beneficial to your economy. Again, it's like sending soldiers to the front line and just leaving them there with no intention to extract them after they accomplish their mission. Who does that? And not only that, because these governments prohibited crew change, their relievers, the ones who were supposed to take over their duties, are now stranded, unemployed, with some of them in danger of actually losing whatever is left of their livelihood because you chose to take the lazy way out and disrupt the crew's employment rotation by simply imposing these kind of restrictions without even thinking of an alternative procedure to somehow make things work. At present, the European Commission has made a call among its member states to designate ports where fast-track crew changes can be done. That is a very commendable action on their part. But what about for the rest of the world? Huh? What actions are being done? Now, under normal circumstances, seafarers have already been sacrificing a lot. But due to this pandemic, it appears that they are now being forced to sacrifice a lot more. And if, unfortunately, something happens to them while on board a ship, whether because of the virus or not, they won't have access to hospitals or immediate health care is there are no doctors on board the ships and there are no hospitals out at sea. And if in the worst case scenario they unfortunately lose their life at sea, again, whether or not it was 
caused by COVID-19, do you think their remains will be returned to their loved ones for a decent burial? If so, then how long do you think before that actually happens? A month? Two? Three? Now, health is important. That is true. But the economy is also important because once it breaks down, the effects will be felt long after this pandemic is over. And similar to the virus, those who will fall to its effects may not even recover. So it is very important, especially during this crisis, to support the seafarers in order to keep the supplies coming, in order to keep the economy running. We should be thankful that there are still people who are willing to risk their lives just so we can enjoy the comforts that all of us have been used to. I know some people will say, ah, but it's their job. They get paid for doing that. Yes, that is true. But in your opinion, does that really justify subjecting them to abusive conditions and sometimes even discrimination? Sultan ng was Sultan. Oh. Ayaw ko malintigan yung mga kasama ko dyan sa puitas. Residential kami ha. Hindi kami namumupahan. Ayaw namin ang ganyan. Huwag kang magpaliwanag. Basta ayaw namin. Ayaw. Ayaw. Make no mistake. Seafarers are frontliners too. And they also need your support. But... Unlike the other frontliners, they don't need your donations. What they need is your support to fix the system in order for them to carry on doing their jobs safely and eventually let them get back home to their families after they finish their contracts. You can do this by simply sharing this video on your social media and spreading awareness and maybe Hopefully, it will reach those who are in the position to make things happen. We can all make a difference by doing even the smallest things. And I'd like to thank all of you for listening. Let's all do our part in flattening the curve.